So, huge spoiler warning. I talk about the entire plot in this review. So, if you want to watch the movie and not get spoiled, please go watch it. Anyways, on with the review. Hey everyone, it's Shub. I'm going to be playing some Mario Kart and talking about the Super Mario movie. So here we go, review time. Okay, first up, the voice acting. Uh, Chris Pratt's Mario was actually pretty good. Uh, he did a pretty decent Brooklyn accent. Uh, obviously, it was nowhere near close to Martinez Mario, but he did do a couple of like wahoos that were pretty close. Um, but honestly, I would not have liked to heard Martinet for 90 minutes. That would have just been completely ear piercing. So I think going the Brooklyn route helped a lot and Pratt did it really well. The trailers definitely didn't do it justice. Like he was great. I had no issues with his acting. And Taylor Joy's Peach was quite a badass. And I think she portrayed that really well in the voice acting. Actually, I really loved her character. There was this one section whenever, um, like Peach and Mario were about to go down a warp pipe to get to um, um, like the DK place, their little hideout. And one of the toads goes up and says, hey, who's that guy? Talking to Mario. And then Peach is like, he's not important. And, and she did it really well. That was, that was awesome. Hilarious. Like, Keegan-Michael Key as Toad, eh. I, I mean, he didn't really do much in the movie, honestly. But I, I guess his acting was fine. Charlie Day as Luigi is actually kind of insane. When Martin A retires, if he ever retires, I don't know, he's getting pretty old and he's still doing it. Honestly, Charlie would be perfect for Luigi. Like, I loved it. And he d even did like the hoo hoo hoo! Absolutely fantastic. And, and then Jack Black as Bowser. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, hold up. I gotta talk to you about this. Jack Black is an amazing actor. That was an incredible portrayal of Bowser. <laughs> Like, just absolutely floored it. He didn't sound exactly like Bowser in the games, but that's a good thing. Because he put his own spin on the character, and it was a good kind of spin. It was the Jack Black kind of spin, and it was beautiful. There was even this one scene, it, it kind of reminded me of, like, uh, Death of a Bachelor tour, whenever Brendan was at the piano singing This Is Gospel, it was a little like that. Uh, <laughs> Bowser's just, like, in a starry field, and... He's playing the piano and he just sings this ballad about Peach. It was so hilarious. And he was doing like the ah, like like the rock riffs. It was fantastic. So funny. Like I think almost everybody in my theater laughed. It was so good. Oh, and there was also the scene uh, near the start as kind of like almost the inciting incident of the story where there's this family that's having trouble with the plumbing and Mario and Luigi go over there, and they end up getting in a fight with his dog. That was a good scene. And speaking of scenes I liked, let's go into the plot. So it starts off with Mario and Luigi in Brooklyn. They're trying to start up their plumbing company. Yeah, it's not really afloat. They end up screwing around with this person's house because they get into a fight with the family dog. <laughs> they end up failing their job. Mario and Luigi go to their parents' place. Mother's like, oh, I'm so proud of you, boys. I'm so proud of you. And then the dad's like, yeah, I don't understand why you quit your day job. You guys f***ing suck, pretty much. Uh, so Mario gets all depressed. He's like, I hate you, dad. And then he goes into his room. He's playing like Kid Icarus. <laughs> and honestly, uh, Mario's room has a, had a ton of NES references. I wasn't able to catch them all because, you know, I've only seen it one time. I just have a feeling they might have hid some kind of Rob reference and I just didn't catch it. So Luigi walks into the room with a... Uh, with mushroom spaghetti and by the way mario hates mushrooms that i i kind of had a feeling they were gonna do that cliche it turns out that on the news um mario and luigi are watching that there's this huge flood happening in brooklyn so mario and luigi go to the like a manhole cover and they end up trying to fix the pressure valve but it like flies off and they fall into the sewers and yeah, they're, they're just a mess. They aren't the best at plumbing. But Mario stumbles upon this warp pipe. And it, it, it's just green, and it, it's pretty much exactly how you think it'd be, just like in the games. And he ends up going through space-time continuum and getting to the Mushroom Kingdom. Kind of like how you'd think a warp pipe works. Very fantastical in its nature. So yeah, good start to the movie. <laughs> Honestly, not bad. Anyways, Mario eventually goes to the castle. And it turns out that there's this dude called Bowser that's trying to um, take over the Mushroom Kingdom. And he ends up finding out that his brother Luigi has been captured by Bowser because they like got separated in the warp pipe. 
and he's going to die because he's in a cage and there's like lava everywhere. So Peach is like, okay, let's go save the Mushroom Kingdom and you want to come with? And Mario was like, all right. But then Peach says, ah, 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 you gotta train first. So they go through this whole like Super Mario Maker sequence and it, it, it was really cool. So Peach and Mario end up going to like the Kong tribe or whatever they called it. Oh, that was the other thing. Seth Rogen is Donkey Kong. Eh? Like, it kind of worked, but he was definitely the weakest out of all the main characters, honestly. His laugh worked really well for DK, but, like, his actual speaking voice, I, I, I just didn't see it. Like, he kind of just seemed like a bratty teen to me, and maybe that's what they were going for. I, I kind of saw that a little bit, that he was, like, kind of childish in his nature, not the most level-headed out of the Kongs. So, yeah, in that case, I guess it works, but... I don't know, man. Nintendo's just been screwing around with DK's voice too much. The only ones that I really liked were Donkey Kong Countries and uh, the Smash one. I, I think the Smash one is incredible. Anyways, back to the plot. So, they end up going to the Kongs. Peach is like, hey, Mushroom Kingdom's gonna die and you're gonna die next. You guys wanna help kill Bowser? The big grandpa Kong's like, sure, but you gotta face my son first. So Mario ends up getting into this like brawl with Donkey Kong and there's like a whole coliseum. It was a fun scene. Okay, well eventually Mario wins and the Kongs get on his side. So they start building a ton of go-karts. Yeah, uh, the Kong people are kind of the people who made Mario Kart in this universe. And then Grandpa Kong is like, okay, if we want to get to Bowser as quick as we can, we got to go on a secret path. So they end up hopping on Rainbow Road of all places, and that's where Chris Pratt does the WAHOO! It, it actually wasn't that bad. Like, uh, the trailer version sucked, but the actual movie one was really good. I don't, there were some times when Chris Pratt sounded exactly like Mario. Like, it, it was awesome. So here they are on Rainbow Road. They're doing fine, they're traveling to Bowser, and then somehow, Bowser and his goons catch wind of this, so he sends a bunch of Koopas out in little go-karts to try to knock them off. And this was amazing. So, it seemed like there was this um, almost King Koopa, but not like Bowser King Koopa. I mean, like, a Koopa to rule all the Koopas. And he had a blue shell, of all things. Great Mario Kart reference. Well, on this Rainbow Road scene, Mr. Blue Shell <laughs> has this, like, humongous monster truck with a big, um, like chopping grill in the front so he was effectively the blue shell and he was just running past everybody like 10 foot tall super wide mario does this really crack thing so mario decides to um he's looking around and he notices that the road is kind of splitting off into multiple directions so he's like okay everybody split up and he goes on this really narrow road and blue shell is following him he ends up basically remaking the N64 Rainbow Road Cut. You know the one I'm talking about, right? It's almost at the very start of the track where you take a sharp turn and you jump off and you end up cutting up like half the track. He does that, like almost to a T. It, it was awesome. <laughs> like I did not expect Nintendo to put that in, but I guess with their new history of booster course pass shortcuts and like actually liking the shortcut community, it's not as surprising as it could have been. But what I think is really awesome is um, after Mario defeated the blue shell guy and his car got destroyed, he ended up shouting like BLUE SHELL at the top of his lungs and he just turned into an actual blue shell for Mario Kart and destroyed the track. It was really cool. Mario and DK have a bonding moment since they weren't really that fond of each other, but now they are. I, I like that. That's a little callback to Mario versus Donkey Kong, I think. It, it was sick. Peach ends up going back to the Mushroom Kingdom because she thinks Mario is gone, and it actually turns out, plot twist, that Bowser wants to marry Peach. He doesn't want to take over her kingdom. Yeah, so it's basically the plot of Mario Odyssey, and the people who made the movie actually nodded to this by giving him the same hat that he wore in Odyssey, which I think is sick. You know, the white one with the spikes? It's the same exact hat. It was awesome. So Bowser finally gets to the Mushroom Kingdom, and he ends up walking to Peach, and he forces Peach to marry her because if he doesn't, or if she doesn't, he's gonna kill all the toads. And later she finds out, oh crap, he's gonna kill all these people as a ritual to me. That's kind of cracked. So as you guessed it, Mario saves the day, but not quite yet. Peach actually takes out an ice flower and starts icing up all of the, all of the enemies and Bowser. That, that was fantastic. And even icing the little um, turn wheel that was pulling everybody closer to their deaths. Well, eventually Bowser's ice starts melting out and he ends up breaking through it with his fire breath. 
and he decides to just go totally nuclear and launch a bonsai bill from his castle. Yeah, uh-huh, they're bringing that guy back. So Mario's actually got to save the day here. He dons a raccoon suit and decides to fly with the bonsai bill. At first, he tries to, like, a Superman move <laughs> and just try to hold it in place. Well, that doesn't work. So what he ends up doing is scratching its eye with his raccoon tail, and then the bonsai gets pissed at Mario. So now the bonsai is racing Mario all over the place. He has an idea. Bring the bonsai into the warp pipe so it doesn't destroy the Mushroom Kingdom. Well, that didn't work out as planned. Bonsai goes into the warp pipe and then explodes inside the warp zone. And that ends up colliding the worlds of Brooklyn and the Mushroom Kingdom. Yeah, um, no wonder this wasn't live action, because that would have been insane to make. So now Bowser's in Brooklyn, everybody's scared, and um, he's actually lost the power star. Yeah, the, the thing that I haven't talked about the entire time, it's not as important as the trailers made it out to be. Bowser gets it from the ice world, and he basically uses it as a jewel to marry Peach with. I missed that. That's pretty much all he used it for. Well, anyways, by the time that Bowser got cracked into Brooklyn because of Mario's stupid actions, the Power Star was out of his control. It got launched out. So Mario and Bowser start fighting over it, and Bowser almost kills Mario as he's going for it, but Luigi uses a manhole cover to save his life. And he says the line that he's been saying throughout the entire movie, kind of like, I guess the theme, the moral story, is that like we can do anything when we're together. It's kind of, kind of a cheesy thing, but it's a kid's movie, I understand that. Well, they end up doing a pretty stupid maneuver, and Luigi jumps with Mario to the Power Star instead of leaving him be. Everybody thinks they're dead, but it turns out that Power Star worked exactly like the Power Stars in the Mario games, you know, where it makes you invincible? So they were all glowing and rainbow. Everybody got really excited as they started just tearing up all of Bowser's goons. And what I think is hilarious is the actual uh, resolution of the story. So, Mario and Luigi defeat Bowser. They end up feeding him a mini mushroom <laughs> and putting him into a glass jar to have as a pet for Peach. I thought that was hilarious. So yeah, that's basically the end of the movie. Not much happens after that. That's, that's the end. Well, I guess there is one post credit scene where uh, Bowser's playing the piano doing his own hmm, like, you know, John Legend ass looking, but he's still tiny and he's just doing this in a little tiny cage. Like, you know, what you'd put your, like, like what you'd put a parrot in. It, it was funny. And he had, like, the tiny little piano, too. So that's the main plot of the story. Uh, it's not the greatest plot I've ever seen in an animated movie. That definitely goes to Puss in Boots 2. But it's nowhere near as bad as the critics are saying. They think it's, like, you know, paper thin and pretty cut and dry. It's got more flavor than that. Uh, again, not the greatest plot of all time, but it's definitely good enough. And there's enough charm in there to keep it steady and not boring. Hold up. This might actually be the best part of the movie for me. The soundtrack was absolutely bussin'. Uh, whenever Mario and Luigi were walking through Brooklyn and they were trying to get to this next person's house, they end up going through a whole, like, uh, Super Mario Brothers sequence, like, playing this rock song. It's definitely not, like, you know, a classic rock song, but they definitely had some of those in the Mario Kart scene. This was completely original, and it was fantastic. Every original song in the movie bopped. It, like, it absolutely slapped. And there were a ton of references to the other games. One of the first ones you'll hear is Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, but there was also references to, like, the Peach's Castle theme from Mario 64. I think there was a reference to 3D World, like World 8, you know, the da 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 That one. It, there was, like, the scene where all of Bowser's people are partying, and Bowser gets up on the mic, and he's like, Hey! You know what, we're gonna take over the Mushroom Kingdom so I can marry Peach and everything gets really quiet. Honestly, the movie's really good. I could gush over it for so long. But I, I really gotta pace myself. I would say that if you're a Mario fan, please go watch the movie. It, you're gonna love it. And if you like watching animated movies, this is definitely not one to skip. Like, I, I don't know if it's necessarily a must-see, but it is really good, so definitely, like, put it on your waitlist or, like, your DVR or whatever, your watch later place. But I don't think it's necessarily a must-see. Unless you're, like, a Mario fan or you just really like animated movies, it'll definitely keep you entertained. Like, it is a good movie. It's a great movie. But, like, would I put it in my top 10? I don't think so. Despicable Me beats it out.
And I'm talking about one, not, not any of the sequels. The absolute last thing that I want to talk about is the Easter eggs. Since the movie was made by both Illumination and Shigeru Miyamoto, they absolutely wanted to do a ton of fan service in this movie. In fact, one of the first things is a cameo from Charles Martinet acting as like the older Mario, like the one from Donkey Kong. That was great. And then there was this dude called Spike, who I think is supposed to reference the dude from Wrecking Crew, but he kind of reminded me of the completionist. <laughs> and then there was this other guy, maybe it was Spike, no, 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 it was like, um, it was like the father figure in that dog's place. And he was pretty much, uh, <laughs> okay, you know, you know, like Vine Sauce Joel, the dude that made the Mario and Luigi, like, LUIGI! Don't be a dinophobe! That guy. Uh, I don't think he was actually in it, but there was this character. It was the the father at the doghouse, and like he was pretty much exactly like that. It it was funny. Obviously, no offensive jokes or like actual crazy stuff, but just just the character sound was almost spot on. It was hilarious. Probably not intentional, but still, I loved it. In the scene where Mario and Luigi are going through the um, construction site, trying to get to the house, Mario ends up jumping on like a light pole. And then it makes like the little boop sound from like New Super Mario Brothers. And he ends up walking by a place that's called like Castle Town. And it has the same style as the Super Mario Brothers castle. It was really cool. That was a good Easter egg. Like I said before, Mario's room has a ton of 8-bit references. I probably couldn't even tell you how many references were in the DK's jungle area. There were so many characters there. After Bowser does his ballad for Peach, Kamek gets up there. And while they're chatting about what they're gonna do with the Mushroom Kingdom, Bowser ends up playing the underground thing, like the butta butta butta. That was really fun. And I'm sure there's a lot more that I can talk about, but I don't want to completely spoil it for you. Please, if you're a Mario fan, go watch the movie. If you're an animated movie fan, go watch the movie. If you're not really into that stuff, it's okay to skip it. Like, it's not absolutely fantastic, but it was really good. Like, it was really good. Definitely giving it a 9 out of 10. Puss in Boots 2 is still the top. I mean, come on. Puss in Boots sweep, people. As always, stay positive, have confidence, utilize your passion, believe in yourself, and be yourself. See ya!